You've had quite a quite a few changes in the band. How how does this in fact affect you? It creates a lot of hard work. We've been really lucky with with this. Um, set of five people and that it's come together in a matter of a few months as opposed to like nearly a year for the old bands. David, you took over from one of the sort of top vocal spots in the country, in the world almost, with Deep Purple. Just how difficult was it for you? Uh, it wasn't too bad really because the members of the band I was working, you know, were really great human beings. They didn't make me feel as if I was replacing anybody. It made me feel it's like a member immediately, you know. We had a jam and like um, within the first um, minute or two, you know, I could tell that they were into the same things I was into. Drugs, groupies, hypodermic needles. So what have you got to say about that? Uh, love it all. If you don't get the gig, you're coming to my house tonight. We're going to party. Now look, lads, it's time you went back to the hotel and got a bit of sleep. Ended up on the roof naked one day, the neighbor called the cops. It was California, mid-70s, I mean, goodness me, I mean, what, what was he going to be, drinking milk? Snorting coke off strippers' bottoms and... Wasn't that the normal thing to do? It was a guitar case, full of cocaine. I didn't like the man I was becoming, but I couldn't stop this fucking merry-go-round. I couldn't stop it. I just went out at that point. It had gone insane. They'd let the tires down on our plane. Well, I knew he was dead. They were putting me in jail for being the last person to see him. Murder, which is what it was. It was not an accident. I don't know how we got out of that country. A life. That's it, isn't it? It's over.